We're talking week four waivers. We're breaking down last night's game, talking news and streamers on today's episode. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment as to how your week went, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, September 27th. Ooh, you see that show number? 1296? Yeah, closing in on 1300. Okay. I wasn't sure if you had a special significance for the number 1296. I was a little confused as well. You guys aren't down with 1296? I mean, it is one of my top 1300 favorite numbers. So, yeah, close to 1300 shows. That's fun. Monday night. Not fun. Not not as fun as thirteen hundred shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wasn't sure if we'd get a touchdown at all during the game. We got waivers on the show today, so we'll be welcoming some players into the fold and making some tough, you know, drop decisions because that's the way it works. They we don't expand in fantasy football. You don't expand the bench one spot per week throughout the entire year, so that you don't have to get rid of somebody. Instead, you have to cut somebody and maybe regret it later. I mean, I I was looking back at last year's league of record, Mike, oh, with no. with Jason. Oh, this is this one's great. And um, I was one of several people with the early season Amon Ross St. Brown mm -hmm. edition subtraction. Oh, well, I mean, what was it like week twelve? Yeah, but he had him in like week nine. Oh, okay. I thought you like if you had him at the beginning of the year. No, it then was, I totally get not holding him for three months. No, I think everybody rotated through grabbing him, seeing yeah. if he did anything, dropping him. Yeah, it was fair. really funny because he was showing me basically how good his team was. He was lamenting that's his right. loss in his championship. He, ah, like, he wanted to remember, so he yes. he pulled up his lineup and he was like, "Look at all these guys I have," and I was like, "Dude, you had Amon Ra. I didn't even remember you also had Amon Ra." And he's like. Oh yeah, I dropped him right after this. Week. Now the 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 continuation of that story, which is also excellent, is uh, producer Al Borland had Amon Ross St. Brown. He picked him up, I presume, after you dropped him. Oh, Correct. that's why he got the championship. Nope, <laughs> mm, he was on my bench. He yeah. was on the bench. Yeah, would you have rather have picked him up and dropped him, Andy, like you did, or be Al Borland who picked him up? and then just didn't have the courage to play him in the playoffs where he certainly would have beaten you and then waltzed into a title. Uh, in that comparison, I'd always rather be me. <laughs> yeah. I choose that side as yeah, well. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so waivers on today's show, some quarterback streaming options. I might be pivoting off of mine based on some injury news yeah. today. So we'll talk about that a reminder there is a big giveaway right now at footclangiveaway.com signed uh Jalen Waddle, Jalen Hurst, DJ Moore jerseys, a virtual studio tour. It's free to enter at footclangiveaway.com. Circling back to the Monday night football game. It ended up okay. Yeah, it did. It, we got there. Here's my number one takeaway from this entire game is that Saquon Barkley is very much back to what he was. He is every single time he took the football out of the backfield on a reception, his burst, it's like that extra gear that, you know, we talk about Dalvin Cook having or Alvin Kamara. Saquon is very much like I am very upset he scored last night because that was You're, my takeaway in yeah. the first and second quarter. Yep. And so I was I was plotting. I mean, I had the the graph paper out. I was already building a bunch of trade offers for Saquon Barkley. And then when he went on his long run into the end zone, I felt like I lost like, well, that potential. That that is exactly Add some what happened. picks into that <laughs> offer. I uh, I had remade the Austin Eckler for Barkley. Trade oh, you just offer. keep going. 
Well, I figured I, I figured Barkley what had the down. You, what did you add? Barkley had the down week. You had two, to add something. And then at the end, uh, at the end, it was <laughs> because Austin Eckler had a big week. No, no, but I was hoping that I'm, I'm with. Andy, I was hoping he, that Barkley had a down week that he didn't break off a nice touchdown run because he wasn't. He wasn't like dominating yards per carry. He hadn't really done much That's through right. uh, the beginning of the game. So I was hoping to capitalize on two back-to-back -back down weeks because Barkley does look back. And now with the injury to Sterling Shepard, the current injury to Wandale Robinson, the lifelong forever going forward injury yeah. of Kenny Galladay uh, and his saxophone. Oh, no. Mm. Current injury to Kadarius Tony Ellis. <laughs> um, you, you have to use Saquon Barkley even more in the passing game, at least for the short term. I think Daniel Bellinger is worth paying attention to. Sure. Um, rookie tight end for Rookie tight end had four catches last night. I mean, when you're talking about your objective of not getting goosed, I think he's going to be too necessary to the offense to um, put up zero points. But The problem is he's just – what does he get – Two touchdowns on the season. I don't know. So in, in, Kenny Galladay is running with his broken. It's Kyle sacks. Pitts. I mean, Kyle Pitts dreams of two touchdowns. And Bellinger's out. He's running with that tuba. I mean, he he's there. He's open. He's getting yards. But that is <laughs> here's no a, juice. Here's a capitalization opportunity for Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. What do yes? He, it, it's, it's a tough discussion around Zeke because he went 15 for 73 scored the touchdown Tony Pollard almost had the same amount of carries he was 13 for 105 had another 46 yard run because he's explosive and you could say hey go cash in on Zeke because this is not the workload you wanted despite sure. him running well on the workload uh, on the work he's getting yes or you could make the rationality now of Dak's on the way back. I mean, there were reports that Dak said he he's not going to rule himself out for next week. Yeah. So um, it could get better on offense, and you know around the goal line, Zeke's going to get more of those opportunities. Uh, Dallas, uh, they did win the game 23-16. So, so Zeke had the rushing touchdown. Earlier in the, in the matchup, he got two carries right around the five-yard line. Unfortunately, essentially gained no yards there. But, like... Goal line wise, it's he will be the first guy up. Pollard will still get some work in there because after Zeke failed uh, two times, and then on third, I believe Pollard came in. But he will he's the primary goal line guy, and I I agree with that, Andy. Of once Dak is back and you can get this offense even more high powered. I mean, not they weren't really high powered last night, but twenty three points, okay. He will have touchdown opportunity but when he's not when he doesn't score you're just getting 15 tw you're getting 12 to 15 carries and probably 60 yards or so but decent touchdown upside so I mean if you're trying to move Zeke what exactly are you hoping to move him for because you are you're not you're not trading Zeke without a without a good other player to move up in the running back rankings you're you're making a essentially like a lateral move, or you're going to go get a wide receiver. I think you have to put Zeke together with another player. I mean, you have to shoot for, you know, Zeke and a rookie, one of these rookie wide receivers, and go get a mix in or something. I mean, you have to sure try to cash in while – I mean, Zeke doesn't get into the end zone last night. We're telling the same old story. Yeah, or maybe you can try to go get a Brees Hall, someone who hasn't really broken out yet, if you want to, you know, just – that's a, a good change name. of scenery. Uh, C.D. Lamb, eight for eighty-seven and a touchdown, and yet could have been much more. Was very much a C.D. Lamb type of game where he was he was really good, but he's also not that great. <laughs> so that's well said. You know, it's the difference between a Jefferson Cup tier of wide receiver, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, and then what C.D. Lamb has been in the NFL, which is almost good. On these eight receptions, there were at least three times I can remember where it was basically a one on one matchup and you just all you gotta do is break this tackle, juke this guy and go up and high point this ball. And it just he he was not catch this wide open <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> yeah, that, there was a big bomb wide open drop that uh I mean, he just catches that and I all mean, of a like, sudden we're we're having we're a, a two touchdown game and he's prolific. To be know. fair to C D it hit him like in the inside elbow. 
That's right. He put his arm yeah. in the wrong spot. <laughs> like, so what do you do with Lamb right now? 33.7% of the targets through the three games, and yet... He'll be fine. Oh, I know he'll be fine, but I'm saying we. it was kind of expected that Michael Gallup would at least get some snaps in this game, which that uh, Michael Gallup is close to returning. And will once Michael Gallup is in form, is CeeDee Lamb getting 33% of the targets, or does that drop down to like 25? They, they, they might go down to 25. They might be better when it's not just C D Lamb out there. I don't I don't think Gallup is going to hurt C D Lamb. He'll hurt Noah Brown and, and the ancillary pieces far more. Anything else from this game you guys want to talk about before we move on? I know we want to get into waivers, but we got some news to cover. No, just the yeah, I mean the the Shepherd injury is sad. But I mean we covered that of all the wide receivers that should move up. Uh uh did we did you say the name Wandale Robinson? I did say the name okay. at one point. He's so, wait Wandale Robinson. I was just saying of the of the Giants wide receivers, yeah, they're they will get a bump up. I don't believe like I'm not picking up Kenny Galladay. I'm not looking at this going, yeah, this is finally it's Kenny Galladay time. It's his opportunity. He's had the opportunity. He has been played off of the field by the likes of Richie James and Wandale Robinson. Of of all the wide receivers on this team, Wandale is the hand picked one by this staff who unfortunately had the knee injury. Uh, so, Kyle, while, while we're moving through the waiver, see if we can get some in, some uh, get an injury update on Wandale. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Correction on what I said about Dak. I guess week five is the game he said he might be able to start. Okay, there we Not go. Not week four. But uh, had the stitches removed from his thumb surgery. Uh, could come back as soon as week five. Yeah, could. Yeah, I I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna make the Russell Wilson comparison because it's just it's a one off, right? We don't know how every different player handles this uh, injury. Uh, you don't know how much is mental, right? You come back with a physical injury and then you make bad mental decisions based on how you feel. So I I think Dak is going to just have to be evaluated on his own. Yeah, uh, independent situation. Yeah, you don't have to compare him to the Russell Wilson uh, injury of last year, but the Russell Wilson injury does, at the very least, make me not start Dak week one that he's back. If it, you, it, it will give me pause. I want to see how he plays afterwards. I'm not going to say, well, after that injury, he'll never be good again forever right. like what has happened with Russell Wilson. <laughs> His thumb's still bothering him in Denver? Oh no my, one's talked about that. Yeah, it's just like... He he, they fixed that hand wrong. <laughs> Are you in a single quarterback league? If Dak is on the waiver wire, I pick him up. And your starter is like Carr or Russell. The the oh yeah, the terrible Russell Wilson. Are you going to pick up Dak and, yes. and stash him? Absolutely. Okay. Lions wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown underwent tests on his injured ankle on Monday. Results were quote encouraging, okay. according to Tom Pelissero. The team will be cautious. Yeah, I mean. It is. It's great that it's not long term, but it does seem like he could. You'll probably miss a game. Yeah, and so that's like, is that really great news? Well, and and the problem is, is you're already going to be down DeAndre Swift now. Yeah. So this offense is going to be down likely their best two players. These are the best two offensive players they have. Hercules, Hercules. Are you shining that turd up, Jay? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> they said you can't shine the turd. <laughs> they were wrong. <laughs> They're probably right. Yeah, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Start of the week on the way? Start of the week, TJ Hawkinson for sure. Uh, Mac Jones, severe ankle sprain. Uh, <laughs> the quote was kind of funny because it says that would cause many to have surgery, but he apparently is not one of the many. Um, he's, what? He's Why likely is that to, there? He's likely to miss multiple games. <laughs> what, is, um, what is that throwing? I have many leather-bound I books. Mean, like, Mac Jones, make sure you tell them. Make sure you tell them how tough I am. A lot of people have surgery on this. I'm not having surgery. Not me. But, Mac, you need surgery. No. No. Tell them I need it, and I'm not getting it. <laughs> but give, me the, give me that cigar. But you don't You don't need the surgery, Mac. Yeah, but a lot of people do. A lot of people need this surgery. What if I did need surgery, and I said no? Doctor, pass. <laughs> You're not passing on anything, Mac. Or am I? <laughs> um, he will. He will poor, be missing. Poor Mac Jones. This is just so 
Yeah, it's really not fair. This to is the, not yeah. a, the direct quotes yeah. that we're finding here. <laughs> this poor guy <laughs> got seriously hurt, and we're mocking him. We're not, we're not mocking, mocking him. him. We're mocking the fake situation of well, why they would say. should not have been say, reported that no, way. No, it should not have. <laughs> I'm throwing that thing <laughs> in all the time. Yes, for the sure. The next time I get any injury illness, a lot of people... <laughs> They would have gotten a surgery for this, but not me. <laughs> yeah. Not me. I don't know if you know this. A lot of people leave the stitches in. <laughs> Dak was like, not me. Yeah. Get these out. Um, he will. Oh. Mac Jones will miss time. Uh, that means that the – we'll, we'll talk about it in the waiver section, but the Packers defense, uh, a strong play against, you know, obviously the backup quarterback and their schedule over the next several weeks is juicy. The Chargers are – Injured yet again. Rashawn Slater, we mentioned it on yesterday's show. He is now out for the season. Left tackle for Justin Herbert. Jalen Guyton tore his ACL out mm. for the year. Keenan Allen, this is where you're hopeful that he comes back because he's going to practice this week. We thought he'd play last week. He didn't, but it's good for his injury, right? He gets another week to recover. Kyle, what's the status of the center? Is he out a couple of weeks? Corey or? Lindsley? Yeah. We'll look it up. Okay. Um, I'll say this. Keenan's had seven. He'll have 17 days off, right? Because he was a Thursday night injury. Um, oh, wait. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't remember now. Did, did he have an extra amount of time? He was injured in week one. Right. Okay. Um, scrape that from the record. I don't remember how many days he's been <laughs> since he's been hurt. A lot of, a lot people, of people would have had <laughs> surgery, though. Uh, right. But not Keenan. Uh, bone bruise for AJ Green. He's going to be kept out at least a week. Thank goodness. Uh, just wow. to heal up. No, no I'm oh, saying man. thank goodness he's going to help him Come heal. Come on. I I'm just thankful that he's not playing on a bo on a bone bruise. There we go. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Joe Mixon should be good to go for Thursday night football. And this uh, Kyle didn't. He, he said it, there's really nothing out there on the Wandale Robinson injury news. They're being, it seems like they're being super secretive. He did not practice at all last week. There had been some reports. I had read that they were optimistic he would be back sooner than later. Their beat reporters basically said they're, they don't have anything right now, though. All okay. right. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. All right, week three in the books, turning to the future. If you are out there and you have suffered injuries, dud performances, some of the players that you took flyers on, I mean, there are there are a number of players from this past draft season that were just wrong. We were just wrong about them. You made a wrong call. We made a wrong call. Cole Komet comes to mind, right? Players you had optimism about, but you had to see it on the field, and it didn't materialize, and now you got to pivot. What are you talking about? He had 25% of the Bears' receptions. <laughs> okay. Stats. He, caught, he had two catches. Um, but we've got to turn the page. We've got to pick up some more uh, players with promise, and you're searching for that next Amon Ross St. Brown, who um, Kyle pointed out had, I think, 5.2 points. For the first 12 weeks. 5.2 per game for the first 12 weeks. Yeah, and then turned into a, a league winner. So you are, you're eyeballing some of those players, and then you're eyeballing short-term fixes, right? Players you can start this week. So let's, uh, let's welcome some wide receivers into the fold. Let's look at the likely rostered category, which is the Tennessee Titans wide receiver room. Traylon Burks, I think, will hit waiver wires this week. That's one thing I'm going to say. He only had a couple of uh, targets. One catch, one rush, yet his snap count is going up. So there's yep. kind of a um, – it didn't go his way. Derrick Henry was very successful. Uh, Traylon Burks, I think – Yeah, he was tackled on yeah. the one. He, all, he, had, he had a boss catch and, and almost got into the end zone. He crosses that plane, and he's not dropped. I think he's going to be dropped by a lot of people. I agree. And if he is, scoop him up. Which So, waiver day, this is about adding players. Once those run, make sure you – inspect each player that was actually dropped because if Burks is dropped his his time is coming it, it like he's I don't think he'll be a superstar next week or even two weeks from now but 
he's someone who you should be stashing because the arrow is pointing up. I would agree. Now let's compare him to a fellow rookie wide receiver who is probably on waivers and say, who would you rather have between Traylon Burks, his upside versus Romeo Dobbs, who has been more involved, had a very good week this last week, uh, had the successful training camp preseason mm -hmm. hype versus what we saw with Traylon Burks. Who would you want between those two if they were both sitting there on waivers? Man, it, it's, it's – go ahead, Andy. No, I, I mean, I think it's Dobbs. I think it's Dobbs too. And you're just looking at – there's a there's a kind of a long way to go for Traylon Burks still, I think, to get the kind of targets – um, you're, you're getting the ball from Ryan Tannehill. Dobbs is getting it from Aaron Rodgers. Watkins is out for a while. And Christian Watson, you know, he's been hurt multiple times. So he can't get into the flow of things. You notice when he was out there, it was really designed touches. It was screen game, end arounds. He had the bomb that he didn't catch, but he's not heavily involved. So right now, you know, you talk about trust. How do you build trust with Aaron Rodgers? How about you catch all eight of the passes thrown you away? You know, all the targets turned into receptions. I think Romeo Dobbs is the better pickup. Um, but that doesn't mean that, like, he seems more necessary right now, and I don't know what three or four weeks from now will look like. Tunyon's been getting into the fold. Uh, Watkins will come back. Watson will come back. Yeah, when I look at those two uh, rookie wide receivers, I see Dobbs as a better pickup and play now. If you yes. If you are in need of help, um, Dobbs is on the field. He's getting the targets. I think he'll have more volume, more success. But I, the talent gap, Dobbs is good. But Traylon Burks, there's a reason why he was drafted where he was drafted. And when he gets his opportunity, which I do think will come, his ceiling is higher to me than Dobbs. So I also if, think he's going to score more. If I was uh, putting one of these guys on my bench as a stash for the big blow up, I would prefer Burks to Dobbs. I'd, I'd still go with Dobbs of the immediacy of like if if Dobbs has another good game, people will be bought in. So how That's much? That's all it would take. So based on what's the likelihood of that happening, and how much are you spending of your Fab budget? Like, would you blow your first pri priority spot yes. on it, and how much Fab? Yeah, if I had the number one priority, I would be willing to. I mean, we'll talk about these running backs and decide if. You need that position, and they're uh, available. But he would be—he's my number one pickup uh, of the week. And if it—if you're in Fab, I mean, I would go. I'd go th mid thirty percent. Even I'm even willing to go into the forties. I uh, because again, the combination of what he did in the preseason and the training camp with proof of concept that maybe he is in fact that good. Uh, and one more good game from Romeo Dobbs, and people will – he'll be locked in as a starter. Do you agree with that percentage, Mike, uh, Jason? Yeah, I think if you're going to go after a rookie wide receiver who's shown flashes, has Aaron Rodgers, you're going to have to spend up. The only fear I have is that as the season goes along, you could have Christian Watson get more and more involved and kind of split – the action with Dobbs, that, that's why I have Burks hired from a standpoint of like, if Burks gets on the field, I think his target share, his percentage of the offense would be significantly higher. All right, let me throw some more names out here. Very low rostered players that I think won't end up that way in a couple of weeks, right? Zay Jones. Mm -hmm. Zay Jones has a higher target per route run over the first three weeks than Christian Kirk even has. Uh, he went 10 for 85 and a touchdown. Jacksonville wide receiver, Zay Jones, and really seems to have a rapport with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, that's what's coming through when you watch these football games. He was 6 for 65 in week one on nine targets. He was one of the guys we were really keeping an eye on in week two, and unfortunately he had kind of a down week in week two, but bounced right back, double-digit targets again. He is clearly involved, and Trevor Lawrence looks good. The Jacksonville Jaguars are – Riding high, I think he would be someone that absolutely needs to be picked up and stashed. And and you can play him in the meantime. Greg Dortch, Arizona wide receiver, 10 more targets, 9 for 90. And when you watch the football game, without question, he's oh, the next best wide receiver on the team behind Hollywood Brown. And, and you know, a lot was made about Dobbs' preseason. Dorch was the same for the Cardinals. He was involved in everything. He was the talk of the town here in Arizona, and nobody cares because he's not a rookie. He's not a highly drafted, you know, uh, 
great talent, but he is an integral part of the offense. A.J. Green is going to miss time. If Rondale doesn't get back this week, yeah. Dorch is probably one of the better Pick up two plays. Like, I don't think I he agree. has long-term success at all. Hopkins will be back. Rondell Moore will be back. The Dorch is not ever going to be able to solidify his role as, like, locked and loaded starter with near double-digit targets. But this week, absolutely. Carolina on the road. That's where Arizona's headed. And um, they've been, I think they're 10-1 and one on the road in their last 11 games. So uh, they are one-point underdogs, one-and-a-half. One-and-a-half. Uh, so Zay Jones, Greg Dortch, uh, Matt Collins had the huge game. Yeah, do we buy in? Uh, it was without I mean, Hunter Renfro. Yeah, well, if Renfro comes back, then I'm not going to start Matt Collins on the back of that, no. And this week it's against Denver and say whatever you want about how they've looked as a team, but their defense has been great. So I'm, I, I don't feel like I want to chase Matt Collins. Well, it, it, here's the thing for Matt Collins because it feels like it's a one-week wonder. But, I mean, it, you you can't discount what he did. That was a sensational game. But week two against Arizona, he had eight targets. And he caught five of them for 66 yards. And in that game, Hunter Renfro was active the entire game. Yeah. So, it's – Matt Collins is I, – I agree with you guys. I'm not going out of control here for Matt Collins. But I think there is something that if you're in a deeper league – that Mac Hollins should be picked up. The hard part is, is that on a weekly basis, if you're going to handicap targets for the team, he's always going to come in fourth. You're never going to anticipate he gets more than Waller, more than Adams, and more than Renfro. So that's the challenge. But you're right. He's been involved. This was a big week. Again, it's a career week. It was a career high in, in re receiving yards. I would rather go after Isaiah McKenzie than yes. Mac Hollins. You go from... The, one of the largest guys to one of the smallest guys, but give me the one catching passes from Josh Allen. He was nine. He had nine targets, seven receptions for seventy six and a touchdown this last week. He's had plenty of flashes on the field when given the opportunity. the The problem is he's still splitting. Yeah, what were his fifty one percent of snaps last week? So he's really splitting with Crowder. But if you're talking about, you know, just a chance at a touchdown or, or you know, a big – like this week against the Baltimore Ravens, I don't know what the over-under is. Can you look that at 72? I thought it was 50. 51 and a half. 50,000 yeah. and a half. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be one of those games where you just want pieces of. McKenzie could, you know, easily have a, a strong game this week. DJ Chark might have hit the waiver wire after a week two goose – but should be the primary outside receiver for the Lions who are missing pass catcher DeAndre Swift. Yeah. And if Amon Ra misses, which is not a guarantee yet, we'll keep you posted. That That's the – he's insurance. Like, should later on in the week you find out Amon Ra is going to miss and you need a – you're like, oh, man, I need some some nitro. I need a, a flex player. DJ Chark would come and they, play. And they play Seattle. So I even yeah. think Josh Reynolds in, like, DFS formats will be interesting. Uh, Russell Gage had 13 targets. We'll see. You know, I, I don't think you chase that. No. Because. Mike Evans is back. Yeah. I mean, he, he would be a spot start in an emergency because, you know, Godwin, I don't think we expect to be back out there, do we? It doesn't Not seem like week. he's ready yet. It is a matchup against Kansas City, so you expect points going up. I, You could do worse than Russell Gage, but you can't expect, oh, he's. You know, last week twelve targets, twelve receptions. You, you're not, you're not getting that again. I mean, are you going after Gage or are you going after McKenzie or Dorch? So if I, if I needed a spot start this week, I'm more confident in the Dorch. Okay. I I would go Dorch then McKenzie then Gage. Okay. Uh, drop candidates for some of these names. Uh, we're, Darnell Mooney. Yeah, he's punted off the bridge. <sighs> Wait, but what what's his target share? <laughs> it's it's huge, man. Hold I think on, he had like gonna... a thirty percent target. If you get any targets. In the game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it's it always 33% if you get targets in the game. Yeah, but it's 33% of oh. a microscopic pie. I mean, he got six targets, guys. Oh, that's – so was that all of them? Did, gotta, did he have 100% of the targets? i got to find the percentage. Hold on. DJ Moore. 25%. DJ Moore, I am happy to cut. I am not happy to wow, cut. Wow, you're going to cut him? I would not cut DJ Moore. We we have a long, long history of him disappearing for many games on end. Now, I will say this. The hope, the upside of um, being breakout, that's that's done. That's gone. Six targets uh, 
week one, week two, week three. This is a mark of the beast. Um, it's funny, though, because you said we have a long, long history of him disappearing for weeks at a time. And then, That would be one of the characteristics of players I don't want. But then he appears. But then he blows up. It's but, not but on just your appears. bench. Uh, sure. I set mean, it, the it, trap it, for someone else. You you could, or you could set the trap for yourself and have him picked up and go off against you. Um, you know, if you look at routes run, uh, snap percentages, he's basically at a hundred percent. Talent, I, I I just don't drop talented wide receivers in their prime just because they're in a bad slump. That I get it. If you yeah, you but know, would you? What if you need to win? Would you drop him for and start Greg Dortch? Would you drop him and start? I would not you know, start Greg DJ Dortch Chark. over DJ Moore. Man. Okay. It's all right. I would if I needed a very, to win. I would make that decision. That's a very very difficult opportunity. But I get it. Talent. Same same game. Uh, How what percentage of his targets are coming from Baker Mayfield? Hundred percent. That's that's, a, that's that's too high for that, me. That is. But that, that problem. That is the. <laughs> hold on, hold on to your butts. What if the silver lining is, in a couple weeks, Sam Darnold could be back for that's the Carolina not happening. Panthers. No, it's not happening. Uh, they're not starting Darnold. No, they're, they've, they still talk about Baker. I mean, they're two and one. They're not starting Darnold. Baker is. Are they really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's two and to one. <laughs> they're, they're the giants of that division. And they barely lost to the Browns. Yeah, and they, they talk about Baker for next year already. So wow. they, they would rather go. I mean, think him, about it. They'd rather go Baker Mayfield weeks. than Sam Darnold. Yeah, give him three weeks. Uh, can we get some kind of week start? Water bet on DJ Moore versus the Dorch. Same game. That'd just be fun to watch and root for. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't mind that. Water bet. I love the Dorch. You hate the Dorch. Uh, Allen Robinson. Would you drop Allen Robinson or Elijah Moore? I would not drop Elijah Moore. Uh, the I mean, you have similar situation with we do, is we've heard Zach Wilson could be back. Uh. And that's that's a change of scenery. That Sorry, they're one and two. Carolina's one and two. Ah, yeah, one and two. They lost to the Browns and the that's Giants. why it didn't sound right to yeah. us, Jay. It yeah. also, yeah, it, it makes more sense. Oh, it makes way based more on sense. what I've seen. But they won last week, then. Big win, big win. S Sam Darnold's coming back undefeated over the last game. Uh, so for Elijah Moore, right now, you know, like the targets are being split up with Joe Flacco's tendencies. Once Zach Wilson is in here, it's going to be way different because we know. At least last year when we saw Zach Wilson, like those running back targets will probably evaporate compared to what Flacco is doing right now. And those the, the target the insane target share that Garrett Wilson has right now, there is a chance that it siphons more evenly to Elijah Moore. There's a chance that it goes swings the other direction for Elijah Moore. He's a very, very good player. In I'm the not, preseason, the the case against Elijah Moore was the Zach Wilson because Flacco is the one that threw him the ball last year during the game, and we were very concerned about Zach Wilson and Elijah Moore. No, I, I totally get it. I'm not saying I'm projecting that's what's going to happen. I'm saying Elijah Moore is a very talented player, and I would I would ride that out and see what happens with the change who, first. Who was it last week, Jason, that you brought up as in that scenario of just it was, uh, sticking with yeah, talent? It was Devonta Smith after week one that's where right. he had a that's full right. goose and A.J. Brown looked like he had everything, but you said this is a really, really good yeah. NFL wide receiver. He didn't he have a good game. Not, uh, Justin Jefferson just had 14 yards. He Cut him. You know, you don't do you, – you, you've got to stick with talented wide receivers. Elijah Moore is a talented wide receiver. Put him on your team. Uh, um, the question of Allen Robinson. That's much harder. It, it is – much more difficult. Allen Robinson, DJ Moore, these these guys that have big names, I'm always like a I don't want to cut them. I want to trade them. I want to use them as a third piece, just fodder in a trade that will push, you know, the name value in a trade to get something done because they don't provide you any value when you cut them. Would I cut Allen Robinson if if Burks or Dobbs was on the waivers and that was my only player I could cut? Sure. But I'm not gonna cut Allen Robinson to cut him and and pick up you know, Greg Dorch for a weekly start. I, I, I can't do that. Allen Robinson was fingertips away from a touchdown this last week. And then you, you just view one him whistle away from a touchdown two weeks ago. Yeah. I would prefer him with three touchdowns right now. versus yeah. one. The, tar um, the targets are the scary thing. He, he's capped right now. Yeah. Five targets is the most he's had. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a problem. Um, okay. Quick break. And then we'll be uh, back with the running backs. All right, let's let's dive in. 
Check out some running backs we want to welcome into the fold here. The main yeah. waiver wire pickup of Jay the Willie. week. Well, there's two. There's oh. there's two, but yeah. I, I, honestly, I think Jamal Williams yes. is the priority. I would agree. Uh, because Khalil Herbert had the big game, and those are the two big names, James uh, Jamal Williams and Khalil Herbert. But Jamal Williams' path is very, very clear right now. Um, yep. He is going to be the featured back for Detroit while DeAndre Swift is out and the all in you know, all the things we're hearing is through the bye for DeAndre Swift. And not only that, but when he comes back, is he one hundred percent? Is he splitting more in a fifty fifty timeshare? While he was healthy, Jay Willie was the goal line back. They pull Swift out and they put Jay Willie in. Week one, two touchdowns, and that was with a fully healthy, great playing Swift. Yeah. So right now you've got a bona fide stud fantasy start while Swift is gone for a couple of weeks. When he comes back, you don't go to nothing. Khalil Herbert, maybe he plays his way into more of a timeshare, but we saw this last year. No, he did Last year he was amazing when he get, was given his opportunity. Everyone was afraid, oh, David Montgomery's not going to come back into his uh, workload. And then David Montgomery came right back into his workload. So I, I would certainly th – those two guys, heck yeah, if they are available in any of your leagues, you got to check everywhere – you got to bring those guys into the fold for sure. Yes. And um, dry, high priority, tons of fab. Those two players are, are worth it. What's tons of fab? 50%? No, 55. <laughs> 55! Especially for Jamal. The, knowing that you'll have a couple weeks here of him being the guy. Here, here's what I'll, I'll say, and this is the nuance of fantasy, right? If your roster needs a running back, then I'm on board with the 50-plus percent. If you have a pretty good running back room, I'm not trying to jackknife Jamal Williams into my lineup because there will be – like Craig Reynolds came in and was – he was the Khalil Herbert of the Lions last year. He came in and dominated. Yeah, when Swift was out, there was three games where Reynolds had 13, 27, 15 opportunities. Reynolds should also be picked yes, up right should. now. And the nice thing is he will – you, you you might not even need to burn any priority or any fab. You would pick him up. I would, I would pick him up to see what happens well, what? while Swift is gone. Okay. Yeah, just I'd, because you might play him the following week or something? Yes. Well, it, it's, it's just to see. I was just trying to figure out what that would – because you're not starting him. You're so. not starting him this week, but I you want to see what the, the, the split is exactly. like. Exactly. And he's also in a situation where should anything happen to Jamal Williams, he would be forced to be the 100% dude. Yeah, they, like Jamal Williams, love him, love the talent of the player. But I think that it will still be a time. It share. will. It so, will. like, it, what is does Craig Reynolds get twelve opportunities a week while while Swift is out? That's why I said I wouldn't spend up if I had a running back room I was even moderately content with. Like, I I don't think that I go as far as the word you said, stud, a bona fide stud. I don't think that's what Jamal Williams is. I think he's a bona fide start for these weeks, but I don't think he's a stud that I would spend my fab on. If I had other players that, like, if I had, if I did decide, uh, like, I got Devin Singletary as a running back too, in one of my leagues. Now, I, would I rather start Jamal Williams with Swift out? Probably, but I'm not spending 55 percent of my fab on that for a two week rental. Right. If you have a, a good, solid running back room, still make a bid on him. Still, you you don't have to drop your yeah. I'm talking your cash. You go twenty twenty five percent then. But even if he's not going to crack the starting roster, to have someone like that on your bench is very valuable. Yeah. Did you? Did we, I wasn't saying don't get him. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah okay. I was just clarifying that. But uh, let's say Khalil Herbert, Jamal Williams, those guys, they are rostered in at least half of your leagues, so they're probably unavailable. I checked all of my leagues. All yeah, of, I did. I did too. They're all taken. They're all taken. Can I? Can I mention though for Herbert? There isn't yet a guarantee he's the starter for this upcoming week, which makes it trepidatious yes. to invest a huge amount of fab on him. Now, you know, the value of him as an insurance running back goes up because you know Montgomery's been dealing with injuries, right? So whether Montgomery comes back or not, he's a higher value insurance back compared to what he was before. And I think you could probably trade him for quite a bit to the David Montgomery manager. Sure. He, he, he holds extreme value to that manager and honestly if I was the David Montgomery manager I'm willing to trade quite a bit to get him it it locks up a running back spot for your team 
Uh, other options here, yeah, you know, Madison is a name that's getting thrown out there, but Dalvin Cook, I think, is going to play. So, you know, you this is another tough one, right, where the value to the Dalvin Cook manager is extremely high. Uh, the value to your team this week might be nothing, but there's re-injury risk. So for Madison, I'm looking myself, I'd be looking at maybe 10% of Fab, sure. uh, probably losing out to the Dalvin manager. Yeah, I I would uh, I would agree with that. I mean, he should be rostered in all leagues anyways just because of the injury history to Cook regardless of the current shoulder problem. The current shoulder problem will just pretty much jack up the prices. Are there and, no running back pickups that exist no. outside of an injury universe right now because Correct. Williams, Herbert, Madison, Pirine with the Mixon injury is a again, Mixon should be back for Thursday night, but you pay attention to that. Algier really just a insurance back in Atlanta. I mean, Jay, it, it, nobody is out there just waiting as a tantalizing third down back. We have you, nothing. McKissick is like, he probably is rostered, but someone like a JD McKissick, who was very involved in the passing game this last week. If you need to pick someone up to start them, you obviously can't pick up Jalen Warren, the running back backup for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I caught him red handed. I think right. I just stopped the little McKissick drop. Oh, a moment! The uh, eye con oh. the eye contact just, stopped it. This is like uh, Boo, the ghost from Mario. You look at him and he can't do it. That's uh, true. He's never initiated he just, the drop while he, you make eye contact. He freezes and covers his face. That's right. By right. the way, Foot Clan, we do have uh, <laughs> we we're getting oh so close. Oh man, with the Deucer camp, but we you know. We're, we're men of high standards. So yeah. we are setting forth, you know, a goal of getting this to you as soon as possible. We just have to polish up. Um, the polish up we're asking the doozers to work out yeah, a little bit. We got to find uh, right, the right you know, doctor who can, you know, the facial, some, yeah, fix facial a few surgeries, things. The, the makeup to match the, the flesh tones that are very, I mean, to be honest, guys, you have some unique tones back there. It's really the bone structure. That's the, the well, you three can't, of them. That's something yeah. you really can't and the, fix. And the teeth, you know, oh, are going to take a, just teeth. so much work. Um, you, are y'all British? <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Brits! <laughs> Don't we have a Brit uh, a British game, a London game this week? Yes, we do. Is that London or is that Germany? It's London, London. Minnesota, and New Orleans. Yeah, six thirty a.m. Mike's going to be live at three thirty a.m. Yeah, to help I you will out. Set your alarms. <laughs> to be on the YouTube. I promise, I will be there. I hope one person's there waiting for you. I hope just one. <laughs> One per the biggest Mike Wright fan in the world. Oh, uh, okay. Well, now you're gonna make me feel bad. Don't oh. do that. Don't do that. I will not be on at three thirty in the morning. <laughs> um, okay. So that's a lay of the land at the running back situation. Hopefully, you got him on your team already. Uh, tight end options. I really like. Uh, there you go. I like David and Joku because the athleticism matches the need in this offense. You hope that they unlocked a little bit of like a plan here. Hope. I don't think that's what happened if I'm being honest. I think what happened was they unlocked Pittsburgh for a portion of the game where the interior of that defense was the place to target. Um 9 for 89 and a touchdown could very well be in Joku's best game of the season, but you still want yeah, this is why the offseason promise for Njoku was there. You chase it. It's very similar to me uh, to Irv Smith. Like, Njoku and Irv Smith, athletic, uh, can make a big play, right? You're not talking about a uh, uh, short area. Uh, Bellinger? Yeah, or D Dennis Pitta style. Ah, uh, yes. You're looking at the one hip quitta. Um, you're looking at a good callback. Njoku and Irv Smith as athletic options yes uh, that being said Njoku looks like a good play this week he, Atlanta Atlanta they've given up the second most uh fantasy points to the tight end position so far it based on the targets the you know he already had the snap percentage the routes run everything behind the scenes was going well the targets just weren't going his way now after such a successful game for Cleveland again like you said you hope it was unlocked, and they go, "Oh yeah, maybe let's use him more. He's looking great." I would, I would be willing to pick him up and start him over plenty of other options that people are toiling through right now. You know, I, uh, if if you're still trying to start Dawson Knox, I I would throw David and Joku in there. I agree. If you are still in the Schultz situation, mm -hmm. um, you went Ingram in one of your leagues. I'd start him over Ingram, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. I'd start him over Irv Smith. Yep. 
Yeah. So the, the, so he's a good option. He is what is, we're saying in the world a, of tight ends. Yeah. He he is a bottom end tight end one right now as far <laughs> as who you would start. What about Conklin though? The most uh, routes run amongst the tight end position. Would you would you look to Conklin over Injoku? Not over Injoku. I I don't know how to. What about under Injoku? Yes. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. He he's been pretty good every week and i just can't get myself to pull the trigger yeah and I've, they they went out and pursued tyler conklin right like he was a free agent acquisition mm -hmm. and brought you, in and given a game plan uzama was also sought after by the jets he was back this weekend didn't play a ton so it, maybe he's just recovering from the injury and that, that's there are there are too many variables with conklin that would have me pick him up over in Joku. And quarterback? To, yeah, I mean, the quarterback change, Uzama getting back to full strength. And he, I mean, he's he's the route king right now. He's run the most routes at the tight end position because the Jets have been getting their faces smashed in on the football field. Yeah, I mean, they're not a great team, so perhaps that continues. But right now, this is completely volume where David and Joku. If he hits, if they realize, hey, we gave this guy a bunch of money and he's a uh, a superstar out there, he can he can become a weekly starter, just locked it in. Where where Conklin, I think, is going to have real ebbs and flows. Yeah, I mean, David and Joku is really the only main pickup and start tight end that exists this week. I, I wouldn't start Conklin. Um, another pickup and stash that I think is good is Robert Tunyon. Oh, yeah. Yep. His breakout game's coming. His snap percentage, keep in mind, he's working his way back from the ACL. His snap percentage week one was 36%, 40% week two, 58% this last week with seven targets. So he is working his way back into – so he should be picked up, but I, I, I'm not going to start him. I would actually – I think I would pick up Tunyon for the long term over in Joku. Over in Joku? I think I would, yeah. You see how high my voice went? <laughs> Yeah, I heard it. I didn't I, see it. I think that when you when you look at the Brissett versus Aaron Rodgers, um, the trust that Rod we're talking about trust, right, with sure. these receivers. I think Tunyon's breakout game is coming very very soon. He'll get into the end zone, and we'll we'll be sitting here on the show and all of an Injoku like line. And I think longer term, I just trust it more. I trust Ooh. it more than Injoku because Injoku's had a long history of flashing and disappointing, and then Brissett. I mean. It's just a tough situation to count on. So I lean Tunyon. He's cheaper on the waiver wire. I think now's the time to get him. I agree that now is the time to get him, and he is far more affordable. I, I just I, I want to start in Joku this week. I don't want to start Tunyon, so that's where I'm at. The rest of season, sure. I mean, the argument of Aaron Rodgers over Jacoby Brissett is an easy one. All right, and then uh, defensive options this week. Who are we welcoming into the fold? The Packers are my favorite. I mean, just because sure. this week against the New England Patriots, you you don't have Mac Jones, so they're going to be um, going to a backup. Then you've got the schedule after that is very nice. You've got the Giants. Then you've got the Jets. Sure. Then yeah. you've got the Manders. So you got a month. I pay up. Of being able to play, them. I'd pay. I'd drop. I'd drop a fiver at least on on the Packers because it stops you from chipping away just you know one to two fab at it for every week. Just get a premium run here. That I mean, that's a really strong four game stretch. You also get the final week of the Browns uh, three game stretch that we were interested in. They face Atlanta this week. Uh, the Bears and Giants face each other. So I, you can pick which of those defenses you would want to start. I like the Giants. I would more. go with the Giants. Yeah, uh, the Eagles as well. Uh, they're they're playing Jacksonville, and Jacksonville looked great when they just crushed the Chargers. But the reason that the Eagles should be picked up is because they're a really good defense. Yeah, I would say they're just kind of in that category now of the every week start at the defense because they may give up some points. But they're going to also make plays, right? They sack the quarterback, um, turnovers, those type Second of things. Second most sacks in the NFL. Well, there you go. Man, but that was Daniel Jones running around last night or what? Dude, I mean. What, did Demarcus Lawrence have three sacks? It's something like that. I also really the, wish Chandler Parsons was on our hometown team. Huh. He's, he's unbelievable. The, he's Daniel, the best defensive player in football, I think. Daniel Jones. Like I mean, he Chandler did his, Parsons. You, you said, what did I say? You said Chandler, the basketball player. Oh yeah, Micah, Micah Parsons. Yeah. Micah Parsons. Yeah. Wow, that's that was, going into the archives. 
I played for really Dallas, con- right? Yeah. I think I, was like, I, don't I was like, know I this don't know guy. Chandler Bing. And then when you said he might be the best in yeah in the NFL, I'm like, oh, Mike, that's who. He yeah, played. sorry. Uh, yeah, Daniel Jones was doing his. He was doing his best in that game. He's, they were not helping. Yeah, him. yeah. He he can still run the football. Yes, again. All right, that was welcome to the fold presented by Samsung Galaxy with multitasking on Galaxy Z Fold Four. You can view available players on the waiver wire, check player rankings, and watch highlights all at once. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. For what it's worth, Chandler Parsons did make the switch from the NBA to pickleball. Oh. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. Football's probably next. That's the the series that you got. Yeah, he could be one of the best. With the last name, saw the uh, the Gronk video playing the pickleball as well. Oh, he looked he bad. Looked, he looks <laughs> mighty flaily. Um, yeah, there's some amateur pickleball right there. <laughs> All right, full stream ahead. We are looking at streaming quarterback options. If you're desperate and you need somebody that has a good matchup and a good situation, I'm going to give you two names: Jared Goff against Seattle, with the hope that Amon Ross St. Brown is back. Um, Goff has seven touchdown passes through three games, five of those inside the red zone. Your explosive plays at the running back position are going to go down without DeAndre Swift. I think they are going to be dependent on the passing game, and Seattle is not a frightening matchup. And then I will also say Jameis Winston's name. If you're uncomfortable with Goff without Amon Ross St. Brown, Winston has a good matchup, and uh, Chris Olave is just a bomb touchdown waiting to happen on every single play. So... Uh, those are a couple of names that I'll throw out. I will throw out a couple of names as well then. Um, this one will maybe surprise you, but mm-hmm. I think he is a fine stream this week. Cooper Rush, he is home against the Manders. He has gotten no respect, but he's 3-0 and in his career as a starter nice. for the Cowboys. Good stat. 2-0 and this year, but he's actually been solid. He's completing 65% of his passes, and he's not just dinking and dunking 7.3 yards per attempt, which is tied for 10th, right behind Josh Allen, tied with Jameis. Washington is allowing the fifth most quarterback fantasy points through three weeks. At home, I think he's going to be fine. And, and honestly, even yesterday's game, it it was it was fine for fantasy. Should have been pretty good if CeeDee Lamb just catches the pass. That Can we throw in Jalen Tolbert not catching that sideline pass as oh, well? Yeah, yes. I mean – He was he was throwing some dimes. Cooper Rush is not a bad quarterback, so I think you could throw him out there at home versus the Manders. The other one I was going to throw out is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan has a very good matchup. Oh, man. I know. Oh, I, man. I know. I, that one's scary. That's my, my official – Streamer this week is Cooper Rush, but Matt Ryan is. I it, love that the <laughs> Matt Ryan. I love that you'd rather not be embarrassed by making Matt Ryan. That's right. Your official one because Cooper Rush is locked in. That's right. You don't want people to think you might start Matt Ryan over Cooper Rush. That is correct. He is the right call. Uh, my streamer this week will go with Marcus Mariota at home. Atlanta Falcons taking on the Cleveland Browns. Mariota. Currently the quarterback 13 through three weeks because look, he he runs. He is averaging eight rushing attempts and over 30 rushing yards per game. Just gives you a nice little a nice little floor, a nice little baseline. And the Cleveland Browns, they're just – they are not scary. So, for example, you can look at our Stream Finder tool, which is a, uh, a tool available for supporters of the podcast at jointhefoot.com. But Cleveland is allowing 20-plus fantasy points per game to the quarterback, including a QB6 finish from Joe – Flacco. Let me ask the question that's going to get um, passed around on Twitter. Any of those names over Russell Wilson? The, here's the, the hardest part for Russ this week. Yeah, I know. Is he plays the Raiders. And the Raiders through three weeks have been a delightful matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. I think I'd play Russ over those I five names. I think I would, I, too. I would play Marcus Mariota over Russ, but n- then Russ over the others. Against the Browns, yeah, Marcus Mariota. Is, the Browns are yeah, and which we didn't mention the. Uh, do we have a Miles Garrett update? So Miles, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he right, got, yeah. Miles Garrett was in a car accident yesterday. He went to the hospital, uh, and we need an update on that situation. So I, I didn't. I was not aware of that. Oh, yeah. yeah, that it it kind of broke like during the game. Uh, sure enough. 
So that's a situation to monitor. We hope that he's all right. Uh, His car flipped multiple times. Yeah, there, like it was a it was a serious wreck. So there, we could be looking at Miles Garrett missing some time. Uh, minor injuries is what they're saying right now, but we don't know. Yeah, that's and they didn't have uh, Jadavian Clowney was out last week, so um, might not be so bad for Mariota. I don't remember if we said it at the top, but um, Sterling Shepard. Um, we, yeah, we, Did we mention the mention injury? It, but the it we, it was confirmed though, right, guys? Torn ACL. Yes. Dang man, crazy. So sad, so sad. That guy is awesome, and uh, gone through some serious, serious injuries. So uh, you could see how well respected he is with the amount of people that came over to that cart from both sides of the ball. So um, yeah, so hopefully he can get well soon. Yep. Regardless of his football status, just physically being all right. Uh, anything else to cover here, guys? Anything else you guys have? All right, good luck on the waiver wires, Foot Clan. Check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Don't forget about our giveaway, footclangiveaway.com. It's a good one. See you later. Make Goodbye. Sure get those waiver Farewell. bids, and everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.